we'll begin our build by constructing the main foundation of the entire printing structure, frame assembly. We begin with the main printer frame in hand, a newly constructed die cast aluminum based alloy frame that is first injected into a two part mould and then cleaned from technological runners and other casting scraps before being sandblasted and powder coated, a new piece over the predecessor and the quality certainly shows. Anyways we'll need our four extruded legs here so remove them from their respective box. Bearing in mind we have a longer pair and a shorter pair. Starting with the longer pair, place these against the size of the frame, the front being the smoother side with the Prusa logo displayed on the top left, using the inner set of holes, leaving the outer set empty for now, exactly as shown here. These are secured into place using four M5 by 16 screws from the opposite side, one in each corner of each extrusion. Personally, I like to use a dab of thread lock here to ensure they don't loosen over time with vibration, although that's completely optional and not noted in the official manual. A hand driver is certainly favourable here, although if you're using an electric driver, keep it on its lowest torque setting for the moment since we want to get all 8 screws into place, so 4 in each extrusion, loosely for the moment. Far enough to securely hold the extrusion in place, but still providing a very small area for adjustment. Next we repeat the same process with the shorter set of extrusions. This time we place them on the opposite side of the frame, so the hexagonal side, fitting into the recess and using the remaining available holes, so that the shorter legs are on the outside of the opposite longer set just installed. Again we use the M5 by 16 screws to attach each into place, far enough so that they are secure but not tightened down too far, and again use a little thread lock if you have some to hand. At this point stop and double check extrusions are on the correct sides, so longer legs attached to the inner holes on the smoother side of the frame, so the side with the Prusa logo on display, and shorter extrusions further apart on the hexagonal side of the frame. Now the manual does state to tighten all screws down at this point, although I prefer to have the complete frame in place first, so instead we'll proceed to attach our front and rear plates, starting with the front, using the shorter of the two plates, Place into position covering the end of the two longer extrusions, before securing using more M5 by 16 screws, four on either side. Again you can choose to use thread lock here if you wish to do so, while just getting all eight screws into position for now. The extrusions are all pre-threaded, so all screws should go in nice and easy without any force needed at all. If they catch, back the screw off and try again. Notice the orientation of the front plate as well here, with the gap being at the bottom. That leaves us with our rear plate, so the longer of the two, although before attaching this we need to slide two M3 nuts into each outer edge of the rear extrusions. This is an important step since these will be used later, so take extra care to ensure they are correctly positioned on the outer side of both rear extrusions, after which we can cover the ends with the final end plate, taking note of orientation of course, while making sure your serial sticker is facing outwards towards you and securing with four M5 by 16 screws on one side and another four on the opposite end. Again the use of thread lock is optional here, but driving the screws in far enough to just hold the plate in place for now. Now with the entire structure on a flat surface to confirm it is correct and completely aligned, proceed to give all screws a final tighten down into place, taking care to tighten each cluster of four screws in a diagonal fashion. We don't want to tighten down in a clock or counterclockwise direction, it's best to follow a diagonal pattern. You may find it easier to use the supplied allen keys for this in order to increase leverage and get these screws nice and tight, slowly working your way around all screws. That's our frame pretty much done, again place it on a completely flat surface and ensure it doesn't rock side to side, if it does then it means one or more of the extrusions is slightly unlevel with the others. The printer can take account for a very small amount, so if one leg is less than 2mm out from the others then you're fine to proceed, any more and you need to loosen the screws, rebalance and re-tighten, the less wiggle here the better. Moving on we can now place the frame on its side or upside down if you prefer and we'll insert our anti-vibration feet into the bottom, one in each extrusion by pushing into place and twisting 90 degrees to lock. You'll want these around 1 to 2 centimeters from the end of each extrusion. 
onto cable clips next, seven clips in total. These plastic pieces will snap fit into the extrusions. So we'll start with the rear shorter extrusions and insert the hook end first before pushing the opposite end around the corner and down into position, which will snap into place. Repeat on the same extrusion and then another two on the opposite side. Notice the orientation here too. They should sit so that the clips are facing inwards towards each other. We now need to install the three remaining clips on the longer right side extrusion. That's the right side with the frame still placed upside down of course. Each clicks into place, spaced out and again so that they are facing inwards. With the frame now placed the correct side up, so it's on its newly installed feet, verify the clips are correctly placed. So two clips facing inwards on each of the rear shorter extrusions and three clips on the front left longer extrusion again facing inwards. The only leg with no clips is the front right. So that's the main frame construction complete. We'll now move on to installing the power supply, a Delta Electronics unit complete in metal casing. This will attach to the rear of the right side of the printer. So we need to locate the two nuts we installed earlier and insert two M3 by 10 screws into them, just enough so that they start to bite. So only two or three turns at this point. Take the power supply unit and place it against the frame on the rear right side before adjusting the two screws we just inserted so that they line up with the grooves in the bottom of the power supply. Once lined up, proceed to tighten the screws. Again, we're not fully tightening just yet, only enough so that the power supply is held vertically in place, but can still slide along the arm it's mounted to. With the printer now facing towards you, again ensure the power supply is installed behind the frame and on the right side of the printer. Once verified, slide the power supply so it sits flush against the frame in order to line up the holes in the frame with the power supply. By default, the power supply sits slightly lower than needed, so that's normal, no need to be concerned here. Simply pull it up a little until the holes are level and proceed to insert an M4 by 10 screw into each of the available holes. You can go ahead and tighten these down into place. Before revisiting the two M3 screws we loosely installed into the bottom of the power supply earlier and now tightening these fully down into place. So that's the printer's main power supply installed. Again, take a moment to verify it's in the correct position and it's nice and tight in place since it helps add extra rigidity to the entire frame structure. It's a similar sort of process on the opposite side with the X-Buddy chassis, which we'll install next. A nice sturdy metal chassis this time round, rather than the tight plastic chassis of the predecessor. Anyways, begin by inserting four M3 by six screws to the rear of the frame, so the side with the shorter extrusions, and on the opposite side to the power supply. These need to be installed in a rectangular orientation, taking care to install into the correct threaded holes, since there are several here. In essence, we install these into the holes going into the hexagon shapes, as shown here. Insert the screws all the way in order to clean the threads and then back each screw out leaving at least a 3mm gap between the screw head and the frame. No need to be super precise here as they'll go back in when the board chassis is in place regardless. It's a similar process with the bottom two nuts we installed earlier. Insert an M3 by 10 screw into each of the nuts just enough so that they begin to bite into the nuts and stay in place. Next, reach for the board chassis, taking note of the four keyholes on the right side. These need to line up with the four screws we just inserted into the frame, hence the need to unscrew them and leave a gap, as well as the two screws inserted into the nuts within the bottom extrusion. Once in place, let the chassis drop down into position. Secure into place by fully tightening the four M3 by six screws back into the frame and the final two M3 by 10 screws at the bottom. And that's the board chassis now installed. Next, we turn our attention to the unit's main electronics board named the XBuddy board. Like the motherboard of a computer, it runs the entire system. Care must be taken when handling the board, so it's recommended not to directly touch any of its components. Instead, handle it from the edges as much as possible. Begin by locating your adhesive thermal pads, which need to be installed on the rear of the electronics board. Remove the white protective layer, and place into position on the board. There are clear markings indicating which size pad goes in which location. Repeat the same process with the remaining two pads. 
It's now time to install the board into the chassis. Feel free to reorientate the frame in whichever position that's easiest for you, ideally with the board chassis facing upwards, after which we can proceed to remove the blue layer from the adhesive thermal pads we just installed. Before placing into position, notice the six screw holes around the entire board. These need to line up with the threaded holes on the chassis, while the thermal pads will in turn attach to the raised portions of the chassis, helping to dissipate heat from its vital components. Proceed to gently lower the board into position while ensuring the holes all line up, before pressing the pads into place. Finally, use five of the included M3x6 screws to secure the board to the chassis. Begin by loosely installing each of the five screws, and after they're all in place, revisit each and tighten down into position. No need to crank down on the screws here since you could end up damaging the board itself. Just tighten until snug. Note that although there are six holes, the bottom right hole here will remain empty for now. Next, you'll want to reach for the 3D printed parts box from which you'll want to find your bag of zip ties and the 3D printed frame parts containing the 3D printed X holder tool you see here. We'll use this for the next step, which involves installing four of the zip ties into the side of the board chassis where you'll find four perforations. With the X holder to hand, orientate a zip tie so that the teeth are visible before feeding it through the perforation, holding the X holder on the opposite side. This simply acts as a guide, folding the zip tie back outwards. Repeat the same process with the remaining three zip ties, leaving all loose for now. These will be used to secure the cables we later install. With that done, place the frame back up on its feet, as we're now ready to begin installing our first 3D printed part, the Y-axis idler. So with the idler in hand, use a small allen key to ensure the internal grooves on either side of the idler's flat surface are clean and clear from any plastic debris, before inserting an M3 square nut into one side, using the allen key to push the nut down into position, and repeating the same process on the opposite side. This can now be installed onto the frame. Proceed to place the idler on the inner side of the front end plate with the sloped section facing upwards, after which it can be secured to the plate from the opposite side using two M3x10 cap head screws. Again, no need to crank down super tight here as you don't want to end up deforming the plastic part, just enough to leave you with a nice snug fit. Next, we move onto the opposite end of the Y axis and onto our next 3D printed part the Y motor holder. To begin, we need to install two square nuts. The first goes into the center here. Again, I like to use the Allen key to clean out the groove before proceeding to push the M3 nut all the way in and then repeat the process on the side edge. Next, reach for the motor's box in which we need the Y motor, taking care to choose the correct unit. It will clearly have Y axis printed on the bottom. And with the motor orientated so that the wires are facing downwards, proceed to place the motor holder on top so that the right and bottom sides of the motor are covered, like this. Secure into place using M3 by 18 screws in the three available corners. Again, don't crank down too hard to damage the plastic. A snug fit is all that's needed here. Orientation is important here too, so double check to ensure the holder is installed in this position with the motor holder wires facing downwards. Okay, so now we need to install the motor pulley onto the motor shaft. To do this, rotate the motor shaft so that the flat section is pointing out towards the gap in the holder we just installed, after which we can place the pulley over the shaft with the teeth at the bottom, closer to the motor. The top of the pulley needs to be level with the top layer of the motor holder. The easiest way to do this is to place an allen key across the top of the holder and then raising the pulley so that it's flush with the top after which the grub screw can be tightened onto the flat side of the motor shaft. Once secure, rotate the pulley, which should now also rotate the shaft of course, and proceed to tighten the second grub screw, securing the pulley into place. The final step is to secure this to the frame. Begin by locating the included 25 by 25 thermal pad and remove the white protective layer, after which it can be secured to the side of the motor. Careful with the orientation here, so it needs to go on the side with the two screw holes in the holder visible and with the motor wires visible from the bottom right side. This can now be installed to the rear of the printer frame and with the pulley facing towards the power supply unit. 
The easiest way to do this is to insert two M3x10 cap head screws through the rear plate going from the outside in, and with the thermal pad protective foil removed, bring the unit close enough to the plate so that the two inserted screws can feed into the two holes on the motor holder, far enough to just catch the threads in the square nuts we've previously installed. Now we can be sure that the holes will be perfectly lined up so we can go ahead and stick the thermal pad to the side of the plate, after which we can tighten the two screws the rest of the way so that they're snug. As a final step, to keep the wire motor cable safe during the next steps in the assembly, temporarily hide it in the extrusion on the electronics box side. And that's it, frame assembly is complete, along with the power supply unit, the electronics board, and the wire axis motor and idler all installed. Give all parts another check over, ensuring everything is in the correct location, so your build should look exactly like what you see here, and ensure all screws are securely in place. Time to proceed with the next section where we'll construct the X-axis and the X-axis carriage.